Hey guys, Dennis Wilbur, the Active Trend Trader. I'm going to share with you before today's video is over a, a routine hack that may change your opinion about where you think this market's going. It will be a surprise. We'll have that at the end of the session. It's once again time for On the Radar, where we talk about swing trading setups uh, during our midweek market review. So with no further ado, let's go ahead and jump into today's session. We've got a lot of stuff to talk about. Okay, starting with the... Uh, spiders or the s p as you can see since the last part of march we have been basically selling off almost directly every day as you can see by the sprinkling of green candlesticks in there there have been very few positive days during that time frame we have done a very classical move where we came sold off down slightly below moving average came back up hit the 200 day moving average and now are falling back into a long term support level down here about 413. Are we going to bounce from here? We have our TSI, our true strength index. It is in the oversold condition. However, it is still pointing down the market forecast, which is another indicator of momentum is in a lower reversal zone. We have a two line cluster. And oftentimes a two-line cluster leads to a rally attempt within one to four trading periods. And since this is a daily chart, we're looking at one to four days. We can anticipate a potential bounce. Today's candlestick is reflective of a bullish reversal signal. It is a bearish harami, a correction of bullish harami. And so if we trade back up, where is it likely to go? Well, let's take a look at where it might go. Well, the most likely place for it to go is just right back up into the moving averages, maybe the eight day, which is here, or maybe a, a, a complete uh, reversion to the mean of the 20 day moving average, which is that red line there, which by the time it would get there, would put it about there. And so where does that come out at? At about 432. Um, let's get rid of that. And let's say a longer term, since this, we are rapidly running into the end of April. And so we have to start considering and taking a look at what are the longer term charts telling us. Now, the weekly chart, as you can see, still looking down one, two, three, four weeks down after a one, two, three, uh, three weeks up. We break this level here. Where are we going? Well, there's a couple of different places we could be going. One, there's support down at the 349 level. And you can also throw in a Fibonacci from this low to that high to give you a projection. And believe it or not, it projects down to about 359. The other thing, since it is approaching the end of the month, take a look at the monthly charts. As you can see, monthly-wise, since January, the S&P has actually been in a prolonged downtrend, but a wide range downtrend. In other words, the lows we're approaching right now have acted as support, but will they continue to do that through the rest of the, you know, or will it break out? Throw a real quick fib on this just to get an understanding of where we might go from here. So I'm going to grab the low here, stretch up to the high there. And with that, as you can see, there is a, if it breaks here, a 100% move would take it down to this level here, $341. Look to your left. Is there past support there? There sure is. There was a breakout from that level right here on the uh, 1618 retracement. There's also a breakout level there at about 367. So that's one of the things we want to be uh, keeping in mind looks again from a uh, um, from a strength perspective what's going on on this longer term chart as you can see tsi is turned over momentum is going down market forecast is rolling over has not crossed through the uh positive 80 zone yet but is heading down and then market and then uh macd also has crossed over and heading down. Remember, this goes all the way back to 2008, and it's a lot of fun to just take a real quick look at what were the 
indications back in 2008, 2007, when we had our last major rollover. And as you can see, we had kind of a top in, a nice little uh, rounded top, which we are looking at. That's kind of what's happening right now. Rounded top. And then things started falling apart. Momentum started to shift to the downside, shift to the downside, shift to the downside. All three of them staggered approach. And then we fell out of bed. This turned out to be approximately a, not approximately, let's give you a good number on it. This turned out to be a drop from the high to the low of approximately 57%. And it took 517 calendar days, a little bit over a, a year and a half to, for it to hit its low. Are we heading for the same type of rough water now? Great question. Certainly looks like that could be the case in that we're getting similar, you know, a uh, uh, similar type of approach where prices are rolling over, kind of a rounded top. And then once they fall, where would a, you know, and this is a good thing to also take a look at, where would a, uh, let's move that drawing, a 34, uh, no, 50% retracement take us? Well, let's just grab this. High here, I think that's the high. Where's 50%? 50, all right there. And look to your left. There's 56%. The other one was about 57. Look to your left. Do you see any levels of past support, past breakout? We sure do. And that's about 209. Uh, what about just a pure 30% retrace or 20% retracement to go into a bear market? Well, that's right there. And again, look to your left. Yeah, there is levels of support. So as we bounce our way along, and the S&P may resolve to the downside, and uh, we're not even close to really, you know, really ripping to the downside yet because we still have to have some capitulation and, and all that kind of neat, nifty stuff hasn't happened yet. So let's run on over to the NASDAQ and see what the heck's going on with that. NASDAQ, definitely a weaker player has done a similar path cross fell down at past support uh, also we have a bullish uh, reversal signal today that is an inverted hammer or a dragon or not, uh, or a uh, tombstone doji at the end of a downtrend tsi at the at the um, over sold condition market forecast three line cluster and normally you're going to expect a reversal within one to four trading, in this case, days after that happens. What about the uh, what about the IWM? IWM has fallen out the bottom of its support, and it still needs to push down a little bit harder to get down into tr the truly oversold condition. But we do have a three-line cluster there. No candlestick reversal signal here yet. Let's go ahead and bop back over the weekly. Yeah, look at the weekly. You've got a whole bunch of, you know, some, some definite moves down to the 173 level, down to the zone here, about 165. And what do we know, what do we learn from the monthly chart? Well, it's weakening too. As you can see, their moving average are starting to cross over. TSI is crossed over and pointing down. This is very important to remember. These momentum indicators pointing down and crossing over, as long as they are in that condition, it favors downside trades. It favors downside trades. And so going into the month of May, what would I anticipate to happen? I would anticipate price action to come up midway into the mid middle third of this monthly candlestick right here into that middle candlestick. And then, you know, if it breaks out the top, that's great. That puts us back on track for a rally. If it fails right there at that level, about that $200 level. If it fails at the $200 level, which is right now, right about right there, we can anticipate a drop further down. As you can see, the $200 level is right up at the bottom of these candlesticks right there. So we anticipate a you know drop down further than that. So that's what we're looking at with what's going on with the uh, 
uh, the indexes, longer term in the indexes. So here's a couple of stocks that I am keeping my eye on. Again, it appears as if the longer term monthly charts are favoring more downside. Here's a couple of stocks to keep your eye on. Zim, uh, this is an Israeli company, looking really good. Had a hammer uh, three days ago. We had divergence, TSI. We had a three-line cluster on this day here. This is a really classic look here. Uh, as you see, three-line cluster on the market forecast here. That was there. Then prices dropped a little bit lower, which is okay. Put in a hammer, and now it's starting to move its way back up. So between the positive divergence here on the TSI, three-line cluster, this could push up. Uh, higher. As you can see, it is right up against the trend line. So I would be yeah, possibly looking at trading this at about the $55 to $54.80 level. Uh, but if it falls below uh, either today's low or the low of yesterday, I would want to get the heck out of Dodge. I would see what, what, what where that was with regards to five. 5% uh, stop loss. That's number one. Number two is Nucor. Nucor has continued to, with the market sell off, it has not sold off. It's really hanging right there at the 20 day moving average, going creeping right up the, this uh, trend line. Here's the 34, here's the 50. We do not have a candlestick reversal signal yet. We do not have the market, uh, the market, the TSI crossing back to the upside. But it is at a long term, you know, at a level of support when price action is in a strong uptrend. So Nucor looks pretty good. Uh, the other one just had just had um, earnings on tech, and we have a a gap up, a gap and go. Uh, look for since earnings are now out of the way, positive gap up. Buyers came in. Uh, we took it back above the 50-day uh, moving average, back above the 8-day moving average, but it failed to get above the 20. So uh, I would look at a couple of different things. One is a pullback into the midsection of today's candlestick, about the $38 level. And if it drops the low of that, let's see, let's draw, let's throw a, um, I'm not going to throw a pivot. I'm just going to grab a uh, approximation of, it goes from there to there. That's about 7%. So, yeah, I'm going to uh, uh, put a 5% stop loss on that if I pick it up at the midsection of today's candlestick, of the day's candlestick. This is a, uh, it does, if it continues to fail there at the 20, you want to be very quick on the, the, the uh, uh, eject button to get out of, of Dodge if it turns against you. So, so what is driving the market for tomorrow? That's a great question. Well, Facebook reported after hours today. And as you can see, Facebook is just having to have get its face ripped off. Uh, of course, it's not, what's it? it's not Facebook anymore, is it? No, it's not. But look, take a look at what's going on with it. It's almost down to past resistance down here. Our past support, excuse me, that's the, the weekly chart. What about the daily chart? Yeah, the, or the monthly chart. Monthly chart looks pretty crappy. And it's got uh, um, resistance up here at the 238 level at the high of this month's candlestick. Well, what uh, is happening? And you can see after hours, prices took off from 174 and bounce all the way up to about 209. I drew this line in here. So what does that transport to or, or translate to? Well, that means it's bounce up. However, since it's not clearing this high right here at the 237 level, that will be a contained uh, uh, relief rally in Facebook. And we'll have to see. That could be an indication that it's going to gap and go from there and grow stronger. And um, Meta, yeah, it's a met, Meta platform. <laughs> and, uh, oh, geez. Anyway, uh, so that's what I'm looking at. Again, I thought it was very interesting that that bounced up like that. So that's where we're at with Facebook. That's what we're going to be looking at for the individual uh, entities. Let's take a look at what we wanted to learn today. One, monthly routines critical to improve 
your trading probabilities. And so what does that mean? It means basically check the monthly charts for hidden clues. Hidden clues of support, just like we did today. Hidden clues of support, uh, hidden clues of resistance. Um, what are the longer term momentums telling us? Because once the longer term momentums shift to the downside or shift from the downside to the upside, you can often get on a long-term trend that's going to carry you a long way. So we want to be aware of that and check every month, not so much during the month, but every month uh, as to, one, are my monthly, weekly, and daily charts in sync with each other? Uh, and uh, that's one of the things. If I'm seeing a stock for the first time or it's just coming on my watch list, even if it's in the middle of the month, I will go to the monthlies just to say, okay, what is the momentum and what are the price action doings? Are there any hidden levels of support slash resistance I need to be aware of and are trend lines? So monthly charts reveal powerful clues and hidden action value levels that we can plan around. So next time we'll be talking about why trading quality growth stocks is critical to high probability trading. That is a very interesting topic because if you're a nickel and dime uh, penny stock, you know, trader, um, you know, they're cheap for a reason. So why not go with a higher quality? Because typically higher quality stocks will maintain their value even if the market or the indexes are falling apart around them. Similar to what we see happening right now with Zim, Z-I-M. So with that, that is our session for today. Aloha. God bless everybody. Leave any comments down in the lower section. And, um, and um, uh, let me know what you would like us to look at going forward in the future. And have a great rest of your April. And we look forward to having a fantastic month of May. Aloha. God bless.